guys so today we're gonna to be going over angular motion questions just example questions because I feel like the rotational video sometimes it can be a little hard to process all that information so I think doing example questions should make it a little easier and this is what this is for so I'm just gonna jump right into it and so for our first question we have this rotational disk here and let's assume that the Omega which is the velocity the angular velocity is going at 10 radians per second which is the standard units for angular velocity and let's assume that it's slowing down by an alpha of negative 2 radians per second squared now this means that angular acceleration or the alpha is constant it's constant throughout the entire time so we can assume that kinematics will work give it a little tick it will work and the question is asking since it's slowing down when it stops how much data has it covered how much you know data is technically displacement so how much distance has it spun now the other value that we can figure out so this will be the initial but the other value we can figure out is since it's when it stops we can figure out that the angular velocity will be zero radians per second at the end so since we have four value we have three values that we know and one value that we need to figure out we can use the one the equation omega final omega squared divided i mean equals omega squared the initial omega plus two times theta times alpha so now the one that we want to find is theta right so we're just going to subtract the final and the initial and that equals two theta alpha and now that means that if we divide it the final omega minus the initial omega squared divided by two alpha equals theta and plugging in those numbers we get an answer of theta equals 25 radians so when this wheel comes to a stop it let's just say one point one point has covered 25 radians of uh 25 radians of distance and that is the theta all right so now for the second question i'm definitely gonna go over something i failed to mention in the last video and that is what happens if the units are different so let's look at this question the angular speed at the beginning the initial angular speed is two revolutions per second our angular acceleration is five radians per second squared and the time is four seconds so at after four seconds what is the final speed now it's important to note that this is revolutions per second which is very different from radians and in order to use kinematics you have to have all your things in radians or in the standard units so we're gonna work first to getting that to standard units so if you've learned if you've taken chem before you might know stoichiometry and that's kind of like the unit conversion thing that we're going to use so if we have two revolutions we can multiply that by the conversion for one revolution we can say that one revolution obviously is 360 degrees or 2 pi 2 pi radians and so that means yeah and that that's pretty much it um this is per second and since seconds is what we use anyways this is our conversion so we can cancel revolutions out and then we get four pi in one second so this is kind of an easier one so we can say that the disk is spinning at four pi radians per second at first so this is the initial angular velocity so what does this mean well we can use the equation again but this time I think we're going to be using this one instead oh no that was plus this one instead since this encapsulates all of these variables and so then we get we get to isolate oh and this already isolated so we're good so we can just plug in all our numbers and what do we get so at the end we get 32.57 radians per second as our final angular velocity and yeah that's how you would solve it so also any result from kinematics will also be in radians per second or in the standard units and so this is how you would solve this problem 
always change all the units to radians and seconds so if it's like revolutions per minute you would use the conversion to get it to minute i mean to seconds so yeah okay so this next question will regard force and torque so we have this problem right here where we have a spinner that is being pushed on by two forces force from the villager and the force from me and the question is which way and how, by how much is well what's like the net torque basically and which way is it going so to begin this question i think it's important to note that even though it looks like me and this villager are pushing it in the same direction you'll notice that the pivot point is here and so therefore it means the villager is pushing it this way and i'm pushing it this way so we're actually pushing in opposite directions so that's definitely the first thing you want to note in your head is which way am i actually pushing in terms of rotation so net torque is going to be all torque added up so if we know what torque the torque equation is it's going to be force rate times radius times the component of force perpendicular now it says sine theta here but in this case since the force uh, perpendicular to the pivot point is going to be the adjacent we are just going to call it cosine we're going to call it cosine this time so we know that this force is already perpendicular so we don't need to have us any cosine or sine on it so we can say and let's assume that the radius we are five meters away here and four meters away here so for the torque torque of the villager it'll equal 50 times 5 and the torque for me it'll equal it will equal 40 times cosine of 30 degrees times 4 and so what does this turn out to be so it comes out that the villager is pushing with a force of 250 newtons and I am pushing at a force of 138.56 newtons. So if we subtract it, 250 minus, since we're pushing in opposite directions, we get we get a net torque of 111.4. Oh, and also the unit is not newtons, newton meters, newton meters. My bad. 111.43. Uh, 0.44 newton meters and since this is positive and this is positive it means that the newton meters are going in this direction counterclockwise so the net torque is 111.44 newton meters in a clockwise di counterclockwise direction so the last question we'll be dealing with is a balance and you might be wondering how does a balance relate to rotational motion but if you think about it let's say this villager wasn't here then the balance would obviously tip on my side and you'll see that this is a pivot point and it's rotating it's rotating like this i'll be going down and rotating so that's actually why a balance question is rotational motion because it can tip and whichever way it tips it'll rotate in that direction and this will always be the pivot point so let's just do this let's try this question let's assume that the mass of this villager is uh, 100 kilograms and the distance from the beam is two meters and let's say my distance from the beam is uh, eight meters and the question is what is my mass so this deals with a pivot point here which is the center and then the two forces so we can see that because they're rotating in two different directions i'm this villager is making rotate this way. i'm rotating this way our net torque counteracts each other so what is the villager's torque well since the villager's mg for force is directly perpendicular to the to the pivot point we don't need sine because it will be the max torque for the force so Let's say that the villager's torque equals 
R times R times F and the F of a villager is going to be MG and the same with mine like this is a net what is what is the net torque well the last thing that we know is that this system is balanced we are actually not rotating it in any way and this beam is balanced we're assuming that the beam is not tilting in any direction so we can actually say that the net torque equals zero since there's no rotation happening right now so what this means is that it, zero equals the torque of the villager minus the torque of me because we are moving in opposite directions so what does this mean zero equals r of the villager times f of the villager minus r of me times f of me so that means zero equals two times 100 times gravity which i'll just say is 10 minus eight times my mass times gravity which is 10 and then by solving this equation 80 80 m equals uh, 2000 so, so 80 m equals 2000 and m equals 25 so I weigh 25 kilograms and it, this balance this will stay balanced so yeah that's the question and these are all the practice questions I'll be going over today um, hopefully they helped next video I hope will be the kinetic energy one the rotational kinetic energy but I have a surgery tomorrow so I won't be able to talk for a while so the next video won't be out for maybe a little bit I'll be definitely trying to release more rotational content and also trying to release AP2 now I think I'm gonna start moving on to physics 2 the only issue is that I'm taking physics 2 right now so it's a bit difficult but we'll see how that pans out well best of luck with your studies and bye bye